My name is Kyle Lank, and it's my honor to serve as your international president uh, for Circle K International this year. So tonight, we're fortunate to have one of CKI's great partners, Active Minds, joining us for an important discussion on mental wellness. Before we begin, I would ask that everyone mutes themselves, and if you have any questions, please save them to the end or, or throw them in the chat, um, and we'll, we'll answer them. So as we all know, we're living through stressful times, and it's important for us as individuals, as friends, and as leaders on our campuses to be aware of what we are each dealing with and what the people around us are dealing with, to know the signs and to understand how we reach out for help. So this uh, September is Suicide Prevention Month, but for CKI, mental health is something that we focus on all year long. It's one of our main areas of service, um, one of our main international service initiatives, and as an organization, we're committed to promoting self-care, spreading awareness, and breaking down stigmas, and so is Active Minds. So a little bit about Active Minds, um, they're a campus-based organization that works with college students to provide education, awareness, outreach, and service, and they've been wonderful partners for Circuit International. So tonight, we're going to learn more about dealing with stress, anxiety, and what to look, for, look, look out for in others. We will also learn about Active Minds and how our clubs can work with their chapters on campuses around the world to bring more awareness on the importance of mental health. And finally, we will get some good ideas on service projects for you and your clubs and your districts to do to make an impact in your community. Again, thank you all for your interest in this important topic. And without, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce Marky e. Pasternak, the Manager of Impact and Engagement with Active Minds. Thank you so much, Kyle, for the wonderful introduction. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Marky. Um, as Kyle said, I work for Active Minds. Um, it sounds like just like Caitlin, I'm coming to you live here from Wisconsin. Um, and so, yeah, exactly. Green Bay is my hometown and I'm uh, visiting my family for a few weeks. So I'm happy to be back here. Um, I could tell Caitlin by your accent when you talked earlier, I was like, she's in Wisconsin, <laughs> or at least from Wisconsin. And so uh, it, there you go. And so speaking of where we're from, I would just love in the chat to get to know you all a little better. If you could put what either what university, yes, she's Kurtz, um, what university you're representing on here, um, or even where and where look what location you're coming to us from if it's different from the university you're at you know if you're at home doing classes at home would love to hear where you are um, stuff like that so I'll do some shout outs as we see some people in the chat tell us where they're coming to us from Barbados okay that's cool oh Jamaica all right that I forget international yes of course that makes sense New Jersey Got Rutgers. Yep, we talked about that. Wisconsin, Madison. I went to Marquette, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, San Diego. Oh, that sounds nice and warm. Um, all these Jamaica, Caribbean places. Like, that sounds great. Um, all right, a lot of New Jersey. Very cool. Well, it sounds like, oh, Georgia Southern. Funny. So, um, actually, uh, kind of that gets me into more about uh, telling you about myself. Um, Although I'm from Wisconsin, I currently live in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, and then I also part-time live in um, Macon, Georgia. And so we're not far from Georgia Southern at all um, or some of their campuses. And so that's funny you say that. Uh, let's see, got California State, very cool, very cool. More Jamaica, love it. Uh, well, it's great to meet all of you. And I'm really honored to be here uh, talking uh, with people from Circle K. Uh, Kiwanis is close to my heart. I was served as my key club president back in high school. So I'm familiar with the organization um, and really love what you all do on an international scale. And so I'm really excited to talk to you all about Active Minds. I'm just gonna share my screen real quick and get um, some things rolling here. Now, I would also love throughout the presentation uh, for you all to engage in the chat. Please ask questions, please make comments. Um, I'll have some interactive pieces where we can talk in the chat and things like that. Um, if you'd like to talk out loud too during discussion points, uh, that is also encouraged. And so uh, if you have any questions or anything, please uh, stop me and then we can go from there. So uh, what I'd like to do as an introduction to Active Minds is quick share with you a video about our organization. Um, and so I have to share the computer sound and we will, oh, and I just entered a password apparently to share computer sound on this computer. 
Let me know if you can hear with a thumbs up. Getting on a college campus for the first time can be so overwhelming because you're kind of facing the world by yourself for the first time. Growing up, I did have a lot of family members who suffered from mental health challenges. Um, it wasn't something that was always talked about. It's been very difficult to talk about what does it mean to be sad versus to be depressed? What does it mean to be stressed versus to be anxious? After losing my friend, I needed something. I was struggling a lot myself. I started Active Minds when I was a freshman in college after losing my brother, Brian, my only sibling, to suicide. Active Minds is a national nonprofit organization focused on changing the conversation about mental health. We're most well known for mobilizing young adults to get involved in and change culture around mental health. We know that life is tough for young adults. And we also know that it's not just the students who have mental illness that have issues, it's all students. We have enough research to know that all students are dealing with things like depression and anxiety and the epidemic of loneliness. Active Minds is serving as this institution on a campus that is getting students talking, having programming during suicide prevention month, having stress relief activities during exams, screening movies, having panel discussions and keynote speakers, all with a mental health theme, so that it's not just that we're talking about mental health when there's a crisis, but we're talking about mental health every day. One of the things I love about our partnership with Active Minds is that they are creative and engaging and relatable. It's just in this easy language, vernacular, that you use on a normal. And I think that helps to decrease the stigma. It helps to start the conversation. I love that Active Minds is able to make the topic of mental health very broad, so that way all people feel included in it. We were thrilled to start working with the RAND Corporation to understand if Active Minds was really making a difference. It was a longitudinal study. It has shown that the presence of an Active Minds chapter on a campus, just that alone, makes people access counseling more, feel more comfortable. Those students had lower stigma and improved attitudes around mental health simply because they felt like their campus cared. That's unparalleled in the mental health field. It's amazing the progress that this movement is making. I feel that through your work and in the generations to come, you're at a tipping point. We really see ourselves as the organization that is going to propel change in America around mental health. They're the leading organization on college campuses. All of our players come from college campuses. So now when you come into the National Football League, guess what? We're gonna continue the conversation. We're gonna help you to continue the conversation. So no better way to do that than with our partnership with Active Minds. When Color Street chose to partner with Active Minds, we knew that they had an amazing story to tell. Having a national reach through our network of independent sales associates and customers, Active Minds has given us the language we need to help them get the conversation going in the communities where they are. I think what Active Minds has done has uh, been an extraordinary contribution to not only college campuses, but as a model for what we can do in civil society to make sure that we look out for each other in the same way that we hope people will look out for ourselves. The empathy, the knowledge I gained from Active Minds is something that I will carry with me long after graduating from college. Active Minds has just changed my life. It's something that I'm not sure I would be here without. It was my savior, it was my passion, and it's something that I will never forget. Active Minds is saving lives. Active Minds is a change maker. Help us as we continue to change the conversation about mental health. Going again. All right. Uh, so that is about our organization. So just like you all, we have a similar model where we have chapters on college campuses um, and high school campuses or uh, high school in high schools as well, uh, where we mobilize students to talk about mental health, to do programming around mental health and to partner with other organizations and do mental health work through that. And that's why we're really excited about our partnership with Circle K is because we have similar models and you all are the leaders in service on college campuses. And since we're the leaders in mental health, what does mental health 
service look like? What does a partnership between these two organizations, um, multiple campuses across the country, and even in places where we have international chapters, what does that look like and what can that look like? And so more about Active Minds, um, we have uh, started out in 2003 and uh, we have been working to um, change the conversation around mental health ever since. We've grown and we have um, numerous programs and over 500 chapters across the United States. Um, with all of that said, um, as the video alluded to, um, our organization was established because our founder and CEO, Allison Melman, um, lost her brother to suicide when she was a student at Columbia um, back in the early 2000s. And so uh, her grief really motivated her in a positive way um, to create a national and international change around mental health. Um, and now in its 19th year, Active Minds has become the nation's premier nonprofit organizing and supporting mental health promotion and education for the next generation. Um, so to look at our organization at a glance, um, we there are 1.7 million people reached by Active Minds programs. Um, we have about 15,000 leaders on our campuses across the country. Uh, we put on almost 4,000 activities and events hosted live and virtually by the Active Minds community this past year. Um, and we have over 1,700 communities with significant Active Minds presence uh, nationwide. So why, why does Active Minds matter? Why does it exist? Um, and why should you care? Um, Mental health is a really big topic um, in a lot of places uh, these days, especially with the onset of COVID. And so one in two of us will experience a mental health issue in our lifetime. Half of all mental health issues begin by age 14. And so they are really common in college students and something that college students might be dealing with along with high school students in our chapters there. Uh, three quarters of mental health issues begin by age 24. So then, you know, how many start between 14 and uh, 22 when, um, you know, traditional students are in college? Uh, the uh, next one I really like to point out is that 67% of people 18 to 24 experience anxiety or depression do not seek treatment. And we really want to get this percentage lowered uh, because treatment is really the only answer that there is to getting somebody on a new path um, and able to live a fulfilling, uh, completely fulfilling life um, without having to experience the symptoms as severe of everyday mental health issues like anxiety or depression. Uh, suicide is the second leading cause of death in young adults. Um, and so Active Minds not only focuses just on general mental health, but we talk a lot about suicide, not only because of our founding story, but because a lot of, of a lot of the programs that we have. Uh, half of students report being depressed or anxious amid the context of COVID. And so Active Minds has really tried to address COVID. And we're going to talk about some of our programs uh, with the pandemic today. Uh, four in five adults report the pandemic as a significant source of stress. Um, and then finally, three in five report being overwhelmed by the number of issues America faces. And so with all of this said, this is why Active Minds exists. This is why we're here. This is why we're still relevant today, uh, 19 years after we were founded. And so our programs, and this is what I really want to talk to you all about today. Uh, Active Minds, uh, you know, is founded in this mission of we want to change the culture and the conversation around mental health. But the question is how? How do we do that? And we do that through our programs, through our chapter network. Again, that looks very similar to the Circle K model on college campuses. We also have something called VAR training, which I'm actually going to be training you all in today as part of this workshop, part of this town hall. Uh, we have a suicide uh, program called Sun Silence Packing. Uh, it's one of Active Mind's more popular programs where we have the 1,100 backpacks out on the lawn, uh, on lawns or malls across college campuses. Uh, and it's a traveling exhibit where you can um, visually see how many people are impacted by suicide on college campuses and get the conversation started on your campus. Uh, we've got have speakers that we hire out to different campuses that are trained and very famous in the mental health 
uh, world that can talk to students um, on campuses across the country. We do programs like Stress Less Week and Life at Your Pace, which we'll be talking about a little more in the coming presentation as well. So today though, I want to focus on three of our programs that I think Circle K will be really interested in. Um, interested in partnering with Active Minds chapters on your campus to bring to your chapters at Circle K. Um, you might just be interested in using some of our resources. Our resources are your resources. So if you wanna talk about mental health, um, with your Circle K chapters uh, because of a service project or just as something to do to uh, show your members that you care, please feel free to use the resources on our website. Our partnership is strong and we really want you all to be able to have those resources. Um, and so I'm gonna be talking about VAR, life at, our, at your pace and our chapter network in that order. Um, so first I'd like to start with VAR. This is our training on how to talk about mental health. All right. Before we start this video, um, it's a little bit of an overview of VAR. Uh, VAR stands for Validate, Appreciate, Refer. It is our acronym or our simple model on how to talk to somebody about mental health. Uh, you know, mental health is a really popular conversation today. Everyone is saying, I want to talk about mental health. Um, I think we should be talking about mental health. But then what folks end up saying is, all right, how do I do that? And a lot of people don't know the answer. How do I talk about mental health? How do I do it in a way that does not, um, you know, uh, scare the person? Uh, what if I say the wrong thing? What if the person gets mad at me? How do I talk about this in an informed way? And that's what VAR uh, created by Active Minds is here to help teach and empower students to do. Hey, has this ever happened to you? Maybe a friend, teammate, coworker, loved one, says something like, I've been having a hard time lately. I've been feeling really anxious. I'm overwhelmed. If it sounds like more than a bad day, it probably is. So what could you do? Consider this an opening to start a conversation with your friend. Talk and listen using VAR. Validate, appreciate, refer. VAR. An easy way to let someone know it's okay to not be okay. And you are not alone. Here's how it works. V. Validate their feelings. Let them know what they're feeling is okay and that you believe them. Validate sounds like, I'm really sorry you're struggling right now. I believe you. I hear you. That must be really hard to deal with. Even though you might not totally relate, your friend's feelings are always valid. A. Appreciate their courage. Speaking up can be hard. It's not easy to admit you're struggling. Appreciate sounds like, thank you so much for telling me. That took a lot of courage. I don't know what to say. I'm just so glad you told me. I love you and I'm here for you if you want to talk or need anything. Show that you're there to support them. Let them know you care and they're not alone. R. Refer them to skills and support. Sometimes what a person needs is someone to listen, though sometimes they need more. Refer sounds like, want to take a break from studying and go watch a movie? I've been using this meditation app. It's really helped me slow down my thoughts. Can we make plans to go on a run together tomorrow? I think it might be helpful to talk to someone. Can I go with you? Show that help is available and that you're with them. Could it be that easy? Yes. VAR conversations can start in any order and can take any form. Phone, in person, text message, even FaceTime. There's no exact right thing to say. In fact, most of us are afraid of saying the wrong thing, so we end up saying nothing at all. Always assume you're the only one who's reaching out, and know that it's not the exact words that count as much as your presence. Listening, connecting, accepting. 
you can make a generous and empathetic choice to be there and could be making all the difference in the world for your friend. Are there things not to do or say? Yeah. Be aware that these aren't really helpful. Saying, it's fine, you'll get over it. Offering tips to fix them. Saying, don't be so emotional, you're so dramatic. Or, man up. Minimizing or comparing how your friend feels by looking for something positive in their situation, such as, well, at least, assuming everyone experiences the same condition in the same way. Just be yourself. One therapist compares it to being a dolphin swimming alongside. Guide your friend with a helpful nudge and be on the journey with them. Remember, you don't have to be an expert to help. You don't even have to understand what your friend is going through. Just showing you care and being there in a moment of need is what it's all about. All right. Hey. Um, let's see. Sorry, I'm having a little trouble pretending. All right, here we are. And so um, that is our overview of VAR. And I want to walk you through each of the steps because this is quickly becoming one of Active Mind's most popular programs. And so with VAR, it, the essence of it is, is that we all deserve to be heard and validated no matter what we're going through. Um, we want people to be able to offer a listening ear to people around them um, and people to be able to ask for a listening ear when they need it. And now more than ever, we need social connection and not distance. Even if that distance um, is physical, it doesn't need to be emotional. So VAR, again, is more important now than it really has ever been. Okay, I'm sorry. I, um, some, I'm trying to go to the next screen here and it keeps bringing me back. Okay, here we are. Validate. And so the first step in VAR is uh, validate. Validate the person's feelings and experiences. And so why don't we use an example situation? Uh, can somebody maybe tell me about, a, uh, maybe it can either be a fake problem, a real problem, just an example of something that someone might come to you about mental health and say, hey, I need help with this. And um, we can kind of go through the steps of VAR with that example. Can be in the chat or um, online. Yeah, I guess something could be that um, recently they have been, they not been able to get out of bed, um, don't feel motivated to do anything, um, questioning, I guess, like their reason, you know, for being here. That um, could be a, an example. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's dipping into suicide kind of warning signs and stuff like that, which VAR can be totally used for. Um, but just wanted to put that out there that things like not being able to get out of bed in the morning or trouble falling asleep, um, questioning why you're here, whether that's on campus or on earth in general, those are warning signs of suicide. And so that is a great example. I just want to make it clear that if somebody is, um, exhibiting those behaviors that it's really important that you do reach out because those are kind of classic telltale signs that something may be going on. Uh, so let's use the example and say that, uh, so a friend comes to you, maybe even a chapter member, somebody in your circle K chapter comes to you and says, um, you know, maybe you ask, maybe you say, Hey, you haven't been at a lot of meetings lately. Um, and I feel like we haven't really been hearing from you as much what's going on. And they say something like, I just haven't been able to get out of bed. Um, I've been feeling really lonely and isolated. Um, and I'm kind of wondering why I'm even in college at this point. Uh, so what we would say to do as active minds is go through the V, the A and the R you start with the V validate and you say, Hey, that sounds really difficult. Um, if they tell you maybe why they're feeling that way, if they say, I can't get out of bed in the morning, I'm just so upset, um, with the situation. And they explain to you how difficult the situation is. You could say something like that makes sense. Um, you could say, I'm sorry, you're going through that. It sounds really hard. These validating things, right? What is something somebody could say that might be invalidating as a response to this person?
be something in the chat. Suck it up. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Being like, okay, well, you know what? Big deal. You can't get out of bed in the morning. You need to kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps and kind of get, and get going. Uh, that is going to shut somebody down. They're not going to want to talk about why they're not going to feel like they can come to you when they're having these feelings. And guess what? Just because you say suck it up or get over it, the feelings aren't going to go away. That's not going to make, you know, everything magically disappear. I mean, have you ever thought to think that maybe the person already thought of, man, I wish I could just get over this, right? It's not really helpful advice to just get over something. Um, let's see. Yes. Oh, Lizzie, that's a really good one. I deal with this and I still get out of bed in the morning. Right. It'd be like, um, if somebody said, um, you know, my dog died last week and I'm really upset about it. And you were like, well, my grandfather died last year and I still get out of bed in the morning. Well, guess what? This person's really sad about their dog and that's okay. It's valid to be sad. Right. So invalidating things are things are sayings or statements, responses that push somebody's feelings aside that invalidate their feelings that, um, kind of give the essence that their feelings aren't important, um, aren't real or don't matter. And you want to communicate the exact opposite. You want to say, Hey, that makes sense. I'm sorry. You're feeling that way. Wow. That sounds overwhelming. Something that shows your side by side with the person, something validating. The next step, um, in Chelsea's example, uh, using Chelsea's example would be to appreciate. And if that person said, you know what, I'm really having trouble getting out of bed in the morning. And you say, man, that sounds really difficult to feel that way. Thanks for telling me that. Sometimes that's not easy to admit. And that took a lot of courage for you to just tell me the truth instead of make up an excuse or try to, um, you know, tell me something that that isn't real. And that person will kind of feel relief when you thank them, right? Because you're validating their honesty, you're appreciating their, their honesty and their courage for being honest with you. Uh, let's see, Caitlin, toxic positivity is something I only heard about in this past year or so. And I think it's easy to fall into. Yes. So, um, especially in the validate stage of VAR, it's really tempting to kind of be the toxic positive person and say, if you, for those of you who haven't heard of this term before, it's very much a always stay on the sunny side. Right. And I think there's appropriate times to try to stay on the sunny side of life. But when someone comes to you with a mental health concern, like I can't get out of bed in the morning, that's not the time to be, you know, Mr. Or Mrs. Sunshine. It's a time to kind of be with that person in their feelings, um, and kind of go sit with them in solidarity instead of saying, Hey, look up here, look where the sun is come by me. They can't, they would, if they could. Um, and so appreciating their courage and honesty is the next thing you're going to want to do. And finally, you're going to move to the R, which is refer. So you validated, you appreciated what they told you, and then you refer them. Uh, and refer can look like a lot of different things depending on what the person says to you. And so refer could look like um, asking the person what they do for self-care. If they say, you know, I've just, uh, I've just been feeling really down lately and I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Say, well, what do you do to take care of yourself? What do you do that makes you happy or puts you in a good mood and kind of get those ideas going. Uh, but let's say somebody gives you some more severe signs, like in Chelsea's example, uh, where they're not getting out of bed in the morning and they don't know why they're here. They're questioning why they exist or why they're in college. Uh, again, those are more extreme signs that could point to suicide. So your refer might be more, Hey, would you be interested in going to the counseling center with me? Would you feel comfortable if we made a counseling appointment together? Now, notice something about all of the things that I am saying when to say for refer and the statements on the screen. What 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 is um what do they all have in common? They're not like they're not like you need to do this. It's kind of just like open ended, you know, leading them to what you know is probably right. Exactly, they're all questions, right? They're all questions. So they're all putting the ball in the other person's court. Um, and why this is so important that the refer piece, the R of VAR be a question is because we don't know what the other person needs and we can't assume that. So it can be very invalidating 
Um, when I might say to somebody, Hey, um, let's, uh, go on a walk. Um, uh, because if I felt the way you do, then I would want to go on a walk. That person might not want to go on a walk. You don't know, like maybe they don't like walking. Maybe it's really cold outside and they're like, I don't want to go on a walk, Marky. Like, I don't feel like I have to like make you feel more comfortable about this conversation. And like, you're doing something for me and go on a walk with you just to make you feel better because it becomes about me then. Right. It's not about the other person anymore. If I'm not asking what they need from me. Um, and so the best refer is when it's formed as a question. Um, and it, again, it, it really accentuates what could be helpful for that person. Um, and so it could look like, again, what do you do for self-care? How does some fresh air sound to, you know, can we call the suicide hotline together? Um, can we maybe tell somebody else about how you're feeling to get a bigger team of support around you? How would we, you feel if we told our other roommate, how would you feel if we told, um, you know, our advisor or circle K advisor or something like that. Right. Uh, so it's always framing it as a question. I think one of the most important things though, to remember all like about VAR is a total package is that. Empathy is really about putting yourself in somebody else's feelings and not just in their situation. So like I was saying before, if I'm trying to put myself in my friend's situation and they really don't like their current job, they're, you know, they have to work a job in order to stay in college, but they're really miserable at their job. And I think, oh, well, if I was in their position, I would just quit. Right. So a normal response from a lot of people who are not trained in VAR would be, well, you should quit your job. You're not happy. Well, I'm not considering a that financially they might not be able to quit their job. There might be a reason they're not quitting their job. And I'm not considering that. Right. I'm just trying to put a quick Band-Aid fix it on it. And that's not really helpful towards the person. So I might say you know, what would it look, or, you know, would you consider getting another job? And they're, you know, to say, no, here's the reasons why. Okay. Well, um, how would you feel about talking to somebody at the counseling center about, you know, healthy work environments and how to better handle your boss? Uh, that might be an actually good suggestion, but they're always framed as a question. Now, Um, again, as we kind of got into that, what to avoid, try to avoid fixing the issue or rush to a solution before you have validated the experience. Try not to be critical or judgmental that can all, that always shuts the other person down and kind of makes them wish they didn't tell you something in the first place. I mean, how many of you, including myself have been criticized for opening up to somebody and thought, man, I'm never telling this person anything ever again. We all have that one person that did that. And you're like, you are off the list. You have been cut from the vulnerability list in my life. Um, we've got using your own experiences. So this is something that is a classic mistake, right? If I'm talking to, let's say I'm talking to Kyle and he told me something, uh, that's going on in his chapter. That's really challenging for him to deal with, with, um, some of the other chapter members. And I say, yeah, back when I was at Marquette, something like that happened. And I tell him the whole story. Now, a lot of times we do that because we want to seem relatable to the person and be like, Hey, you know, I know how you feel because I went through something similar, but it doesn't really work like that. We think it does, but actually what that does is shifts the spotlight off of Kyle's problem onto Marky's problem. And then it's not really about Kyle anymore. It's about me. I made it about me. And so try to avoid that at least until the person can share how they're feeling and you can kind of work on, um, a solution driven by them with them. And then, you know, after you go through the V, the A and the R, then it's appropriate to say, you know, I do kind of know how you feel because this one time, right. You can do that later, but don't do it right away. Um, and finally saying something that is just not that bad, that is not helpful at all. Obviously it's just very in doubt invalidating. Um, yes. So 
And like Steve said, yes. So one incident could result in varying responses from others. Exactly. So that's why it's always good to not put a fix it bandaid on it and say, well, you should just quit your job because maybe that's what I would do if I was in a bad work situation, but there might be a reason why the person isn't doing that. And so framing it as a question and saying, and being empathetic about their feelings And not putting yourself in your situation and saying, well, I would do this, but saying, man, if I felt that way, that would be really overwhelming. That's the piece you want to connect with, right? That's what you want to be sitting with, with the person saying, man, that sounds really overwhelming. I'm really sorry. The feelings, it's more about the feelings than the solution. So you do not need to be an expert to help. You just need to be there. It's not always about saying the exact right thing. If you mess up one of these steps. It is okay. Just as long as you communicate that the other to the other person that you are there and that you are with them and that you're willing to listen and you're willing to work on your listening skills. That's really the most important thing you can do. Oh, oh, all right. Something was going a little slow before. Sorry. Okay, here we go. So that is VAR. Uh, before we move on to our next program, does anyone have any questions about VAR? No? Okay. Well, um, if you are interested in getting your entire chapter, your Circle K chapter at your school trained in VAR, uh, this is something you can do by either uh, getting somebody like myself or another staff member from Active Minds to do it for you, or you can look if you have a chapter at your campus, which we'll talk more about in a little bit, and somebody there is probably trained in how to present and give the VAR training. And so that is one way you can partner with your Active Minds chapter. Uh, Our next program I'd like to talk about is Life at Your Pace. This is a new initiative that came about because, oh, okay, this is, okay, this is a new initiative that came about because of COVID. And so we heard from our student network and from college students that we talk to generally um, that it was really overwhelming this past summer to kind of think about going back to school fully in person for a lot of people. Now, I know different parts of the country and different parts of the world have been handling COVID very differently. Uh, Last year, last school year, because I just started at Active Minds, I actually worked at Auburn University and I worked there for three years and advised their Active Minds chapter. Uh, We were back in school since last September. And so it's not really that overwhelming to people anymore at Auburn because we've been doing it for a while. But then you've got students at other universities around the country who are coming back in person for the first time in a year and a half, almost two years, and some people who have never been in person. So Active Minds launched Life at Your Pace. Um, It is an initiative that is empowering students to make their own decisions and set their own boundaries around socializing, coping with the new normal, um, and to advocate for flexibility and empathy um, that they maybe once had during the pandemic and want to keep now that it's kind of coming into a new phase. I don't want to say that the pandemic is ending because I think we've all seen the news lately and how different things are happening right now. So it's definitely not over, but we are in a different phase. We're not all in quarantine anymore. We're not, you know, all in the solidarity of March, 2020, where we were all hunkering down and baking bread. That part is over. And what does this new part look like? And so uh, we want to give resources to students so that they're able to be in person when they want to be in person and feel safe, but also tell people that they're not feeling comfortable and being able to do that without being, um, you know, bullied or being invalidated in any way. And so with that said, um, we have a couple different parts of our life at our pace, life at your pace initiative. One tangible thing that we have for our students is our Life at Your Pace wristbands. These are wristbands that we are selling and have for free to print out on our website uh, that you can use at your meetings or events. And we want to welcome that our Circle K uh, family uses them as well uh, if you are interested. So you can get these wristbands again, either the paper version online or order through us, uh, the kind of live strong, uh, stretchy kind and give them out to people who come to your meetings and events and they can pick 
uh, which color they would like to have for their own boundaries. So green says, I'm comfortable with hugs, high fives. I'm good. Uh, yellow says, Hey, I'm staying cautious. And I don't really want any physical contact, but I can stand in a circle of people. I can be sitting in a meeting and we can talk, but you know, please don't touch me. And then red is keep your distance and keep your hands away from me. I, I don't want handshakes. I don't want anything like that. Um, and so this is something that active minds thinks, um, will actually stay around for a long time, even after COVID, right? It, there are just some people in big spaces who don't like doing like the big hug chains or aren't really a fan of icebreakers where, you know, you're shaking hands with everybody and that's okay. We want to take what we learned from the pandemic in the early phases and keep the healthy things and the healthy boundaries that we've been setting with people. Um, I'd also like to encourage you all to look on our website. I will um, post uh, a couple different links after the presentation's over. We have a whole Life at Your Pace hub, and it has different suggestions from mental health professionals on how to, again, set life at your own pace. How do you advocate to keep your classes online if you want them online to your professors? How do you advocate to work from home if you're not comfortable going back in person into your office or into an internship? Um, how do you talk to your roommates about maybe wearing a mask at certain times, uh, when they're going out because you're afraid of getting COVID and things like that. We have suggestions for all of those things. We want to make sure that people know, uh, that they are able to set good boundaries because good boundaries help your mental health, right? Those things are very connected, uh, not being able to set boundaries and not being able to have good, healthy boundaries with people and communicate them, uh, really increases stress. It increases anxiety. Um, and it can lead to a lot of isolation and loneliness and fear of being rejected. If you don't know how to communicate your boundaries well. Okay. I'd like to go next. And last, but certainly not least, the last program I would like to share with you all about is our Active Minds Chapter Network. And I know I've been referring to this throughout the presentation because it's similar, a similar model to Circle K. Um, but our Chapter Network is probably our biggest and most renowned program out of all of our Active Minds programs. These are our student leaders, our volunteers, our students who are on the ground working um, to make Active Minds great every day on over um, 500 chapters across the country. And so with that said, um, we are really, again, excited to be partnering with your campuses um, to hopefully have different chapters on these smaller scales at college campuses pair up Circle K and Active Minds. Um, so let's talk about the power of partnership. Um, I would just like to know in the chat or out loud, what other organizations do you all partner with, if any, on your campus? And what do you do um, with them as partners? So a, a, a very like Rutgers specific partnership we have mm -hmm. at Circle K is we partner with Are You For Kids, which is our on-campus um, children's cancer network. So we oh. work with them to like, um, mentor and um, interact with ch uh, children with cancer. Fantastic. That is a great example of a partnership. And it sounds like that's another student organization, right, Kyle? Yep. Okay, awesome. What other examples do we have out there of partnerships with other student organizations that your Circle K chapter has on your campus? Any, any out there? All right, well, I would like to start a conversation about this and tell, and even just maybe start from my own experience here and Kyle, I'll probably have you chime in a little bit as well from your partnership experience. Um, but when I went to college and ended up being the president of Active Minds, uh, I was really mistaken at first, thinking that Active Minds was best on its own, right? I was a chapter president, a chapter leader, just like you all are for your Circle K chapters. And I thought, okay, I kind of looked at other organizations on campus as my competition. How do I get people to come to my meeting over, you know, Circle K's meeting over, um, you know, Engineers Without Borders meeting out of out over Dance Marathon's meeting? How do I get people to volunteer for our organization and come to our events? And that didn't work really well <laughs> because 
p- different people will choose different things based on who they are, their interests and likes and what they have time for. How you really get mobilized as a campus organization on any campus is through partnership. So I discovered this when we started doing a mental health awareness week. And I noticed the first mental health awareness week we put on, we kept just hitting the same people, people who are interested in active minds, people who were psychology majors and were interested in mental health, people who were getting therapy at the counseling center and wanted to come and learn more. And those are all great audiences, but everyone has mental health. So why aren't we getting other people who are interested in this topic um, to partner with us or come to our events? And it was because we weren't specifically reaching out to to organizations they were in and targeting um, groups that they were interested in. And so the partnership with Circle K, I think, is a really unique opportunity nationally for chapters to say, hey, we have two really strong organizations here. We have Active Minds and we have Circle K. What if we did a mental health awareness week together and we had volunteers from both organizations tabling and talking about mental health? If we got together and pulled our funds together to have a speaker and then we can get a really big name speaker to come to our campus and talk about mental health and put both the Circle K and the Active Minds logo up there. Um, What if we could... Um, put on a 5k fundraiser and donate it to a mental health organization in our community, um, or maybe to a family on our campus who lost somebody to suicide, something like that. And we did this together as two organizations. I found as a student leader, once I started asking people to partner with us, whether it was student government or the tea club, yes, we had partners with the tea club, um, (laughs) that our events were better attended, people cared more, and people felt like their mental health was getting taken into account. And so with Circle K, you guys are also kind of a general organization in that anyone can do service, right? Everyone should be doing some sort of volunteering in some sort of way. It's really healthy for you. It's healthy for the community. And so with that, um, you know, partnering with other organizations can help people get interested in Circle K and say, wow, I didn't know that there was such a big, just amazing service organization with all these opportunities on my campus. And because of Active Minds, I found out about Circle K and now I volunteer with them too. So, you know, the organizations that choose to partner instead of compete are really the ones who I feel like flourish on most campuses. And I've seen this time and time again, as I've advised, as I've gone to different campuses on behalf of Active Minds. And so the fact that we have a national partnership that on this big level, we're saying, hey, we're partners kind of gets that first step for you in the door. And so let's talk about what it looks like to partner with an Active Minds chapter. The first step would be looking if your university has an Active Minds chapter. Um, And what I'd like to do is I can't really see my notes in um, in this view right now, but I'll put the link in the chat afterwards. Uh, is we have an entire list of campuses that we have chapters on as Active Minds. And I think most of them, as you were saying, different universities have chapters. I know UW-Wisconsin has a chapter. I know Rutgers has a chapter. Um, I know I know Georgia Southern either has or is thinking about getting a chapter. And so um, there's a lot of different um, opportunities there because most of your campuses do have an Active Minds chapter. I don't know if we have many in the Caribbean, but we can kind of talk about about what to do if you don't have an active minds chapter in a minute. Um, the second thing to do would be once you find out you have a chapter, reach out to the leadership, whether it's looking at who is president at your school, finding out who their advisor is, reach out and say, hey, um, I'm president of Circle K, I'm vice president of Circle K, I'm secretary for my Circle K uh, chapter here at you know the University of Tennessee. And um, we have a national partnership uh, active minds in circle K. Do you have any events coming up that you need volunteers for? We would like to volunteer, um, you know, at mental or get, you know, involved with mental health in the community. What could this look like if we do it together, start those conversations. So make them aware of our international partnership 
and then find common values and set up some goals uh, that you can have with your Active Minds chapter to make that Circle K partnership huge on your campus. Because we can set this partnership up internationally, Jeff and I and the other staff at Circle K, but it's really up to you all to mobilize it on your individual campuses. Um, so what could an Active Minds chapter do for you? They could prevent, present uh, VAR, like I just did, to your organization. Uh, they could uh, support any mental health-based programs or initiatives that you are trying to do on behalf of Circle K, whether it's hosting a fun stress less night or if it's volunteering um, you know, with NAMI, for example, um, in your community, the National Alliance of Mental Illness. Um, we could provide extra volunteers at your events, no matter what your events are. We're our partnership. If you want some people from our chapters to be there, we can get them there and we can support you if you need it. And finally, again, you can volunteer at mental health-based organizations or events together um, and represent your campus as one in your community. And so I'd really like to encourage you all to take advantage of that. Um, so before I close and send out some of those links of our programs, I want to thank you all for having me today. Um, please follow us at Active Minds on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, or find us on Facebook and TikTok uh, just most recently. And feel free to email me with any questions. My email is below. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marky. Um, first of all, I will definitely be following on TikTok. I think most of us here are addicted to TikTok. And secondly, to all the Circle K club leaders out there, if you're like, if, if your events have gotten stale, if you're kind of looking for stuff to do, definitely partnering with another organization, a part of an organization like Active Minds will take your Circle K club to the next level and it'll bring a whole new class of people and a different, you know, brand of people into your club, which I think is just, it's just a win-win. So Marky, again, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone for coming out. Oh, you're so welcome. One sec. I'm gonna, trying to get out of my PowerPoint here. I'm learning to use a Mac for the first time. It's been quite a trial and error experience. It's my first time presenting with a Mac on Zoom. So here we are, but I'm trying to get those links sent to you all. So just one second. Um, I apologize. You guys can keep going with announcements if you want or something. But, um, Do you have to have any announcements? Now, I would just say also um, in our newsletters, we typically include information from um, Active Minds. Um, so you can always check out um, our newsletters uh, for resources. Active Minds website is wonderful um, for resources, um, not only on a personal level, but on a club level as well. So again, they're great partners. Um, we are looking at for ways to engage this partnership, partnership even more. So again, um, reach out to, to them or to me if you're interested in speakers or videos or anything like that to show at your club or district meetings. Awesome, and I just put that link in the chat so you can click there, it's our chapters page and you can scroll down and see if we have a chapter at your school. Um, if we do and you're having um, trouble, yep, I'll get my email in there. If you're having trouble getting in contact with them for some reason, let me know and they usually reply to me. So <laughs> um, I can get them in contact with you ASAP. Uh, and now if you don't have a chapter at your school, um, it could be something to try to get one started. Um, if you're not interested in doing that, that is okay too. You have a lot on your plate with, you know, heading Circle K and being Circle K leaders on your campus. And I understand that, but feel free to use any resources from our website for mental health advocacy uh, for, through your own Circle K chapter. Uh, also, those Life at Your Pace COVID resources are right here as well. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Any final thoughts? Awesome. Thank you so much, Marky. Everyone have a great night. Stay safe and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Kyle.